All right, everybody, I thought I'd shoot a video of this trailer that I'm going to try to repair a few things on, try to knock out some dents, fix some lights, and uh, we will rewire this and try to get this thing balanced a little bit better. This is a tilt trailer. So you pull the pin and then the trailer will tilt. But it is off balance. It doesn't stay tilted. And I'm going to try to correct that with these boards in the slot back here it does tilt so it's not really bad off balance just a little bit and these lights I'll show you this so these are kind of wore out and kind of busted up I'm gonna pull all of that off and throw that away and I like this I'm gonna keep the jack but I have a flat four on this trailer and this is it that is the wiring that I have on my truck you can pause that and look at that if you need a diagram or you can look it up online there are a couple of ways to wire this and I'm not sure something about an RV and a non RV or something I don't know but there's the lights that I have on hand this is just what I had on my shelf and I don't think there is a diagram on this box so these lights wires coming out I'm just gonna have to figure that out and they were saying that the color codes on these plugs I had all this on the shelf just um, stuff I had on on hand on my shelf so I'm not really having to buy anything but they were saying the color codes can be just whatever random things so I am going to use a voltmeter and set it to continuity and I can pin this and figure out exactly which one goes where I can cut this back cut the insulation back and I can label each one of these wires individually on where they need to be plugged into on the trailer so I'm gonna go through the whole trailer and I'm going to fix all of this stuff make these boards where they slide in and out better I hope I can get to that and hopefully I've got ADHD hopefully I don't forget that this needs to be balanced because it is kind of a necessity to balance this but see this wire right here that goes over here so when it is tilted that wire gets pulled very tight and what I'm gonna do is attach it to the frame right back here way back by the axle I will put uh, something a piece of round stock or something right there to run the wire through so it does not dangle down all right I'm gonna get started on this probably tomorrow I just got it in here today all right I'll cut you back on later all right, I uh, decided I was going to start on this trailer tonight. I'm probably not going to get very far. This morning, I uh, went through my parts, and I have located these LED tail lights. And I think I'm going to use those because on these, all these wires coming out of the back, um... The blinker and everything is all wired separately. I don't know why I didn't think of that because it has a yellow lens on top there. So I'm not really going to be able to use that on the trailer due to the wiring of the truck coming back. And this was kind of expensive. I think I'm going to throw that back on the shelf. I'm going to throw these back on the shelf. I'm going to use the wiring that is on the trailer and I'm just going to put a 7 pin P 
connector on. I was looking at this because I like the hooks instead of this style. I don't like that it's not user friendly. But there again, I don't really want to put anything super nice on this trailer. Super expensive items I don't want on this trailer. I had these with the chrome rings. This has all been sitting on the shelf, so it'd have to be cleaned up really good. But still, I really don't want to spend the money on... That's already spent, but I would rather kind of hold off and not put that on as well. I will probably just use these to hold the wiring that's already on the trailer up onto the frame. And cut off what I don't need off of that harness. And put some wire loom over that so the sun doesn't deteriorate the wire and make it super brittle so that I can save the wire because over years that will happen so I'm not sure what I'll get done tonight not much because I just worked 12 hours and I'm kind of tired so um I'm going to look at how I'm going to mount these, and I'll cut you back on. I made a little bracket out of 2 inch angle, and I uh, kind of angled that so that it would not be sharp. And then I ground my paint off right here, and what I decided to do was hide the tail light right behind this beam here. And... I'll just weld it on right there and we will call that good that is not going to be any kind of weight back here so I will have to add some kind of weight to the very back and that will make it tilt the spare tire on the front I could possibly move it to the back right here and that would completely take care of it but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. I cut the tail lights that were mounted right here off. Actually, that one was mounted on this bar right here. And I just angled it down with a plasma cutter. I built these brackets and just welded those on there. That's going to be probably... Uh, out there in the way and possibly get hit I will just try to be careful with them but I wanted them as far back because that's the safest spot so people can see them easier and what I'm doing now is I am pulling the wires and getting them up here to where I can put that in here and I have disassembled this from its case and they, they have a wiring instructions right here left tail light, right tail light so I'm going to wire that in so there's the notch on top and this is for the screw you have to get a really small flathead screwdriver to pull this out and then I just put my screwdriver in the end right here and knocked it out right there so that I can put my wires onto that I'm gonna put a ground and then my light wires so I'm not gonna need very many of these but I don't have the four-way flat on my Titan and um, so I just needed it so I didn't have to have an adapter all of my other trailers have this, so having an adapter be kind of pointless. So I'm not going to be charging a battery, so I'll add a ground to this. I don't have any trailer brakes, so it'll just be the brake light and running light and the blinkers and the ground. And I don't like these chains, but they're going to work fine. I might find a hook. I'll keep my eye out for a cheap hook and maybe I can just stick a hook on the end of that 
I'll just go ahead and leave those for now. It's not really that terrible. It's not going to bother me too bad. So the trailer's not in bad shape, really. It's it's nothing really to look at. But we're about to fix that. So I'm going to... They've got green. I don't know if this is standard. But they've got green going to the right. And yellow, brown going to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and just hook this up to that. And then they should have, they might have wiring diagram right here, I don't know. I've not really looked at that. So, yeah. I'll cut you back on. Before you do anything, make sure you put this cap on. So run that, run that down your wiring like that. So once it's connected, you can just slide that back up on there. If not, you'll have to take it all back off. I'm going to put my wire inside of here and then I'll tighten that screw down and that should be the way to go I got all that hooked up and I went ahead and tied a knot right there so that it will not pull out so I'm going to pull that up to that knot and I may have to move my knot because that's quite a bit of wiring I'm going to see if it'll cram up in that hole. And then I can put my screw in. And then I can plug it up here. And I can pull my slack through. And mount my wire solid. And check my connection back there. And see if it works. I've got the lights working. And they are just temporarily spliced together just to know that they do work and up here I used this cloth wire loom it is a lot better than the other and that's what I have on hand so I just used that I put zip ties on each end that's my ground and I pulled some slack out of these I'm going to work on that some more as I go. What I need to do now is get this to where it tilts correctly. I really don't want to move the spare tire. I kind of want to leave that there just because that's more work. Most likely I think what I'm going to do is make some brackets back here at the back to hold weed eaters and blowers, leaf blowers and things. Um, I could just strap them down tie them down with rope or or whatever onto a little hooky thing back here at the back so i'm going to look at doing that and i need to use a heavy material because this is off balance by probably 20 pounds i'm going to look around in this metal that i've got and i'll come up with something all right so i've got this on hand and it is super thick and super heavy but i think it'll work great it kind of caresses back here around the weed eater if you pull the weed eater off and don't drop that on your foot seems to be balanced fairly well I can push down maybe 10 pounds of force and it will stay down but if you pull it at all it will tilt fairly easy I'm gonna go ahead and weld these to this edge right where I've got them super strong but perfectly fine it's basically just pieces of scrap that I have laying around so suits the per suits this purpose perfectly my tail lights are very close to the ground I kind of wish that I had maybe mounted those a hair higher 
they're about a quarter of an inch from the ground that one's a little bit higher that's probably three quarters of an inch it'll be alright I'm just going to let that go I guess and I'll cut you back on alright we're doing good this morning I've already got everything working on the lights and we've got the tilt fixed to where it tilts back my shop is super crowded looks like it might rain today I'm tempted to paint this outside it will probably be ready today but uh, I can push down with probably 10 pounds of force and it closes perfectly fine lowers down so I'm gonna call that good what I'm going to do now is try to beat some of this in shape. This kind of wiggles out right here. And these fenders are kind of beat up. I'm going to try to straighten some of that. I will take this spare tire off and get all that ready to spray. And I'll try to straighten this out. A little bit as well and some of these don't swivel like they probably should I don't have that pin in there I sat down on this last night or the night before last and was going through some things and I didn't have that pin in and I thought I was dying it's nothing worse than thinking you're gonna sit down and the chair bottom stays with you all the way to the ground so this one kind of swivels this one swivels and is kind of loose I'm gonna tighten that one down I'm gonna loosen this one up just a hair I'll go ahead and paint these with the trailer and that one's a little bit loose I'll tighten that one up just a hair and then on this trailer what I'm going to do is remove these two bolts and this plate right here will come out and when that plate is out I can start removing these boards I'll have to slide each board down to this end and remove it one at a time until I get them all removed once those boards are removed I'm going to go in and try to put some um, some kind of wire holders either I will weld some nuts on the frame to run my wires through or I'll maybe drill holes and mount these drilling holes and mounting these is a lot more work but I guess maybe I could weld that on there just weld this in right here onto the frame of the trailer and then run my wire through and just bend that up like that that would probably work even if I catch the little rubber piece on fire, it's still going to be fine. I might do that. So the boards have to be removed for that. So I'll catch you back on in a minute. I went ahead and rounded these edges off so that it wouldn't catch your shirt or scratch you or whatever. And I cleaned all that up, welded all these in. I went ahead and used washers started all the way at the front and went all the way to the back and just welded some 5 16 washers right here is where it pivots so I went ahead and put a washer here and then a washer here so it should pivot right there and not hurt this cable at all went all the way to the back with it both sides and then these fit through the washer so I can always disconnect here and pull that through the washer easily and I put male and female on one side and male and female on the other side so that you cannot get these backwards when you go to hook that back up the white is my ground 
So I used a self-tapping screw and a ring connector. That should take care of all of the wiring. And I tighten these down where they swivel but not super loose. And I pulled all the boards off, of course. I'm making good progress today. I'm going to try to bend some of this stuff back together where it should be. Bend these out a little bit. Straighten some things up. I don't like the look of that at all. But I may just have to let that go. I really don't want to. But I might just let that go. It's not going to be a big deal. This trailer is uh, its just for hauling a lawnmower. So I do want to straighten a few things. I'll probably straighten this up and then take lunch. Okay, you back on. And to straighten metal like this that can easily hook onto the metal so you just take that down to the size that you need and this will be super easy to straighten that out you can just work that back and forth I may have to go up here and down here and here but just a little bit of time and it's fairly easy that's pretty straight I'll we'll just call that good We'll go up here, and this is pretty twisted up. This is going to be moving. It doesn't have any support right here going down. So it's going to be trying to twist whenever I try to straighten this. So I may have to use a hammer. I'll probably need two hands for that. I'll set my phone down. Not even connected right here. That weld's busted loose. There we go. Something else to fix. I will weld that back on both sides, obviously. Ooh, almost dropped my phone. All right, I'll weld all that and then see if I can finish straightening this. I got it kind of scuffed with a red Scotch Bright pad. And then I washed it with Dawn dishwashing liquid. And then I blew it off with an air gun. I think I'm going to go ahead and primer a little bit on this after lunch. And then uh, go from there. Alright, I'm going to use some paint that I just have on the shelf because I don't want to spend a whole lot of money. And this stuff is already purchased and I'm not going to use... Um, a lot of what I'm doing here I'm not going to use on um, certain projects so this is a black epoxy primer direct to anything and I have two of these primers floating around one of them is a gray and one of them is this black I think the black was no induction time which means sit for 30 minutes after you mix it I think this can be sprayed basically as soon as I mix it and I just got done mixing it and I used this strainer to get out all of the big chunkies out of the paint so it doesn't clog my gun up. This is a 2.5 tip gun that I have purchased. It will spray pretty thick material and this paint is not thinned. If this was the induction primer then I will have fish eyes and all kinds of things going wrong with this as I spray. But it also takes about five days to cure. This other one, I think this one should cure in like two hours if it is sunny and it is kind of the sun's trying to come out. But hopefully in an hour, this will be ready to spray some base coat. And I'm going to spray the my Titan right there I used. A color that was similar but not spot on and I don't want to spray any more of that um, I got a custom hood and I sprayed and it doesn't quite match so uh, 
I don't really want to spray any more of that on there. So I'm going to use that on this trailer. And some clear that I have on my shelf that is almost empty. I'm just... I wouldn't do this on any project normally. But I'm going to mix these clears together. Well, I might have enough. That's one of my clears. Quite a bit left in that, really. This one needs to be used up. There's not much left in that one. That's base coat reducer, it appears. Uh, I'm going to go through my cabinet here and pick out some stuff that needs to be used up. And just use that up on this project. This is a Sada Jet 3000. I'm going to spray the base coat and clear out of this. It has a 1.4 tip. And I'll dig my gray out here in a minute. Alrighty, so this is still a little tacky. It's been 45 minutes. So it should be ready to go here in just a little bit. And got the gray out. It's going to be a your chem. That is static gray. That is a pearl coat. Let's open it up. So there's the color. That's pretty much the color of my Titan. I'm a um, the Titan is a metallic, and this is a pearl, so it, it's really close, but it's not a match. I've got some spots that I need to paint on my Titan. I just can't seem to get to my own projects. This trailer's kind of needed, but I got a little bit of hail damage I gotta fix. So the hood is custom hood, and it is a shade off. I mean, it's not bad, but the fender's factory, and the hood is what I painted. But I've got paint on the roof. These Titans are notorious for that. I tried to keep mine clean and waxed, but it still did it. But it's 07. This is, what, 2023, so it's not like it's new. Everything kind of wears out. But I got to get it in here and get some paint on it. But I think I'm just going to go back with the factory color so I don't have to try to figure out what to do with that static gray. There is gnats flying around in here. And gnats have really killed me on paint lately. For some reason the gnats this year are way worse than they've ever been. As far as I can remember. But... That's pretty thick right there. It's kind of tacking up. It's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and try to spray. It might be a little early, but if it doesn't turn out perfect, it's not a big deal. It's just a trailer. I went ahead and mixed about two to one, two paint and one part of thinner reducer. And this cup right here... I think it's 3M. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty awesome. So there is a baggie inside of here, and you're basically sucking the paint out of a bag. It's a fully enclosed system. This locks down onto there, and you can spray upside down. It'll pull all the air out. Let me screw this down. I'll show you. Alright, I screwed that down tight and I fit my gun to it. It's just a quarter turn and it locks down in place. And then what you can do is with it upside down like this, you can put your air on. And you can hold your trigger down and it'll pull all of the air out of that baggie. And then it's fully enclosed. And you can spray upside down and it'll never skip a beat. So we're going to use that and see what we can get done here. All right, it is 1.45 and I've got the first coat of base down. 
I'm gonna lay at least one more coat get this kind of covered so it's more silver and then I'm going to spray this I forgot to spray it I'm not even oh, there's bird poop I'm gonna wash it but I'm not even gonna sand this I might wash it with a scotch brat roll with that I'll cut you back on I got everything ready for clear put two coats on this it is not perfect. They even got me a little bug right here. He wiped off. He won't wipe out a clear though if you get clear and then the bug lands. The bug will not come out. This is turning out pretty good, I think. and spray some clear so I've already got it mixed up and I didn't clean my gun so it's got a little bit of gray in it I really don't care a great deal so the UV protection will just help it basically and the clear is a little bit harder to scratch than the base coat or possibly even a single stage I'm not sure but the stuff I had on hand not out really any money so I get to spray in this clear I went ahead and sprayed a super light coat and then came right back around and sprayed a gloss coat I'm gonna call that good on the trailer and I'm gonna call that good on the uh, Whatever this is bench stand I don't know whatever. so yeah it is what it is I'm gonna roll with that and all I got to do now is untape a few things and hook my lights up I gotta wait a few hours I'm very impatient I just got my gun cleaned so this has been sprayed for like 10 minutes but we can go go ahead and unmask a few things here and I will cut you back on in a little bit now this is barely any prep work and some base coat and clear epoxy first I put that on there and smashed it down on those wires so that you can pull and tug on these and it's not affecting anything back here on the connections I still got to put my spare tire back on I'll throw it on real quick So here were the old boards and they don't look very good. We decided to just go ahead and put new boards on. So we got about half of them done. And we are putting our skyline. We are putting some Thompson's water seal on them. That was some of the rotten board that I had to beat out. So one coat of clear coat dried really, really quick. And I went ahead and bolted the taillights on, got everything wired in. So all I have to do now is put the rest of the boards on and we will be pretty much done. I'm just using one of my old boards to get my length. I'm just having to trim off a little over an inch. I just line it up on that side and then mark the other side. Alright, so this board has a little space in between. It's not quite wide enough. I could probably swap that out to a 2x10. I'll look at doing that. And i swap these bolts out. But I don't have the nuts for the bottom side, so that's all I'm lacking. 
and this project will be done at that point. It looks pretty good and I did all of this today all in one day. It's pretty easy. Just kind of push through it. I'm going to go ahead and stain these boards. Put Thompson's on those and then slide them back down in here. For the tailgate. Here's that swing frame. It turned out pretty good. All I got to do now is get a swing put back on it. That fender's still kind of beat up. Alright, hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'll talk to y'all next time.